It wasn't long ago that Ubisoft faced some backlash because of the way they marketed Assassin's Creed Valhalla's first look gameplay trailer. That's how they labeled this YouTube video, despite the fact that it really doesn't actually show any true gameplay. And so you can see from the likes to dislikes ratio right here that a lot of people did not appreciate the misleading messaging and the marketing of this trailer. And now, in light of all of that, Ubisoft finds itself in another wave of backlash due to the way they are marketing Trackmania, which recently went live service. This is a long-running series. Plenty of outlets have been reporting on this. It's a free-to-play title with what is essentially a subscription model. No, not essentially. It straight up is a subscription model. All of that is detailed on this website with a headline that reads Trackmania details racing experiences with starter, standard, and club access. And scrolling down here, you'll find the details. PC Gamer summarized it best in this article, which reads, For those who don't pay anything, solo and multiplayer races will be available with a roster of 25 tracks rotating on a quarterly basis. You'll also be able to play user-created tracks and try, which I take to mean demo, track, replay, and skin editors. To get full access to these editors, there is a $10 yearly subscription fee. This tier also gets you access to daily competitions, and every track of the day, an official track will be available to you permanently, rather than a temporary part of the roster. For $30 a year or $60 for three years, you get club access. Among other things, this tier lets you participate in the Open Grand League and to have a chance at qualifying for the track Mania Grand League. Essentially, the free version is a shell of this game, and more valuable features are being paywalled. This is a monetization scheme that a lot of Trackmania enthusiasts are not happy with. There are plenty of people out there who would prefer if there was a lifetime access thing where you just pay for the game once and gain all of these features without having to worry about recurrently paying ever again. If you go to the Mania Planet forums, you'll find a user who expressed the following qualms with this monetization monetization scheme, Mikey said, I must say that I am disappointed. While I'm happy to throw money at Nadeo, as up to this point they have been great with their game designs and fantastic at not placing a barrier between developer and player base. However, I have in principle a real aversion to anything subscription. I ask for Nadeo to consider having a lifetime purchase option. Otherwise, I will and likely others who think the same way will opt to consciously choose to play the free starter access and Nadeo will forego any money and community effort they would have otherwise received. In response, here's what a Ubisoft representative said. Hello, Mikey. Actually, it's not a subscription model, but an access to the game for a limited time. You pay for having access to the game for one period, and that's it. When the time is over, you have to buy the game again for the time that you want to access it again. Uh, congratulations. You have literally just explained how a subscription model works while saying that this is not a subscription model. This is the equivalent of someone saying, oh no, these are not loot boxes. These are just boxes with loot in them that yield random rewards where rarer items have less of a chance to appear and that you have to recurrently spend money on because the probabilities are adjusted in such a way and the audio and visual cues are presented in such a way that it will get people hooked to what are essentially gambling mechanics. Congratulations, you have just explained loot boxes. You can attempt to justify the monetization scheme you've implemented in your game, but don't insult people's intelligence. Don't treat your community like they're brain-dead morons. And if you're getting a sense of deja vu out of all of this, that's probably because this will remind you of the time when EA tried to say that loot boxes are not loot boxes, but rather surprise mechanics, as you can see in this footage right here, when EA and Epic were being questioned by the UK government. Do so, you consider them ethical? So what we look at as, as surprise mechanics. No. Um, right. But I think it's... You can hear the huh right in the background and that's kind of my reaction to what this Ubisoft representative is trying to do here. Divert away attention from a subscription model in a piss poor attempt to relabel and rebrand a subscription as something else. And the ironic part about all of this is that this individual made the monetization scheme sound even worse. He flat out says right here that you're paying for a game over and over again. You have to buy the game again for the time that you want to access it again. 
Well, when you put it like that, I mean, you're 100% correct. Like when you put it that way, you're actually highlighting the egregious nature of a subscription model. Now, subscription models can work if people find the value in a video game in like a sprawling MMO or something along those lines where that stuff is more accepted. But this is Trackmania we're talking about. It is far from a sprawling MMO. It is a kart racer with single player and multiplayer features. There are plenty of titles like that that simply offer an upfront fee. Now this whole rebranding of a term that becomes stigmatized is nothing new for the games industry. Microtransactions is a word that's no longer spoken as much. Instead, developers will use terms like time savers to try to present a scummy monetization scheme as if it were a benefit to the player when it's the publisher and developers purposely and artificially creating the issues in a game so that players have to buy the solution. Oh no, it's not a game that has been thoroughly marred by monetization that keeps milking people and nickel and diming their wallets. It's just a live service. We're providing you a service. Like they just try to use these words that frame these negative elements as a positive thing. And this is something that game developers and publishers have exploited to great effect, judging by how much the goalposts and the envelope of monetization has been pushed over the last few years and how much of this crap has been normalized. Except Ubisoft right here managed to frame their monetization model for Trackmania in an even worse way by saying it's not subscription, it's paying for a game over and over and over again. Like people are catching on to this shit. Hell, catching on is the wrong term to use. People just aren't this stupid. You can't say that something isn't something that it is. You can't say that one plus one does not equal two when it inconveniences you. It also doesn't help that the community has expressed confusion about aspects of this monetization scheme and what's paywalled and what isn't. So this is a report from PC Gamer. In these two paragraphs, they state, but there also appears to be some confusion as to what is and isn't included at the free tier, which is contributing to the upset. For one, one, the initial post in that thread states that the track editor is only available at the $10 tier, but the pricing FAQ states that the full editor is included at no charge. The limitation is that it's restricted to saving just one track. It also isn't clear how exactly server access will be restricted. The pricing page says free players will be able to try map review servers, but those who pay for standard access will have full access to them. I've emailed Ubisoft for more information and will update if I receive a report. Apply. Now, while Ubisoft didn't directly respond to PC Gamer, Ubisoft Nadeo Managing Director Florent Hillis uh, Castelnerac took to Twitter to express some of his sentiments surrounding this issue. He first tweeted out, yes, it is subscription and it's not the point. What do you mean it's not the point? You can't market something as not subscription when it is exactly that. And this is something that Twitter user Lethal Joe calls out saying such a model isn't bad at all, but the way it was advertised by saying that it was not subscription was bad. And the response provided was it was not advertised. It was an answer by someone of the studio to another player question in the 14th page of forum on a given minute of the day. Welcome to the internet. The fact remains that people who are invested in a game will look for information and it doesn't matter if they find it on the 14th page of some forum they will look at something the developer posted that relays information about the game and they'll spread that message also him saying that this was not advertised is a flat-out lie there's an FAQ section in the official track mania website where one of the questions asks is the game under a subscription model and you know what they say? It's more like a sport club license model. If you want to compete or practice regularly, a federation helps to organize the competitions, maintain the infrastructures, and you buy a license in return. It's the same in Trackmania. It's not subscription, it's just surprise sport club license. Fuck off, it's subscription. This is just all around awful for optics, especially during a post-surprise mechanics era when people are more conscious of developers and publishers trying to rebrand negative things as positive things. Surprise mechanics instead of loot boxes, recurrent spending or time savers instead of microtransactions, live service instead of monetization, money-milking machine, so on and so forth. And then in a twit longer 
uh, page, he highlights why he believes this monetization is fair, talking about how $60 for three years, that's very rare, and how he believes that, you know, $20 uh, a year is something they believe is okay for one of your top online activity. And I guess players will make that determination. I, for one, think that they're paywalling way too many gameplay elements. It's not cosmetic stuff here. They tout free-to-play, but the game you get for not paying is such a shell of the full experience. And $60 for three years, for $60 you can purchase so many sort of larger scale games and you can play those permanently without having to pay recurrently every so often. And then to close things off, the guy quotes someone talking about how people are making news out of nothing, claiming Meaning that people are just taking a vocal minority and focusing on their opinion, ignoring that the vast majority are supportive of the new payment model. No, people are not making news out of nothing. The fact remains that a developer tried to claim that a subscription model isn't a subscription model, just as EA tried to claim that loot boxes aren't loot boxes, but rather surprise mechanics. And that kind of misleading marketing and flat out bullshit needs to be called out and corrected. Again, you can make the argument that you want and claim that this is better than DLCs, microtransactions, yearly sequels, or monthly subscription. People will have their own opinions about that, but don't flat out deny the fact that a subscription is still a subscription. You can't just rename that or say that it isn't what it is. Especially in this era when there's a lack of transparency between publishers, developers, and their community. The lack of transparency, especially where monetization models are concerned, is in my opinion a major problem in the games industry, and every instance of that must be highlighted, it must be called out, especially when it's as blatant as this. Beyond the fact that many people aren't happy with the direction that Trackmania is taking compared to past entries in the series, they are flat out calling you guys out for spouting bullshit and you gotta own up to it instead of saying it's not the point and trying to deflect. You guys flat out just pulled an EA surprise mechanics nonsense, so don't sit there and post on Twitter like you're on some high ground in all of this, because you're not. You flat out just lie to your audience. Or at least that's one man's take on this whole situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the Trackmania dev here saying that it's not a subscription model before proceeding to describe exactly a subscription model. Drop a comment, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.